All right, so strap yourselves in, folks, because uh, today we're heading uh, straight to Milan, to a place called the Officine del Volo, which uh, means, if you don't speak Italian, the Flying Factory. Hmm. Picture this, this awesome building, just you know, drenched in aviation history. And you're right there in the middle of it. That's the scene Royal Enfield picked to unveil something completely new. Now, we all know Royal Enfield, right? 123 years in the motorcycle world. But this, this isn't just another bike rolling off the line. It's a whole new brand, a brand they're bringing back to life, actually. And trust me, you're going to want to hear about this. Launching a whole new brand. Yeah, it's a pretty gutsy move, you know, <laughs> especially for a company with like this kind of legacy behind it. Makes you think they're really trying to reach a different kind of rider, a different way of thinking about motorcycles even. Yeah, they're definitely going for it. They're bringing back the name Flying Flea, and that name alone, it just tells you something, right? It's a name packed with history, that's for sure. You think about World War II, those paratroopers jumping out of the sky with these small, like crazy agile motorcycles strapped to them. Those original Flying Fleas, man, they were all about adapting, getting the job done no matter what. And you can see how Royal Enfield's trying to connect that spirit, right? That spirit to today's world, but obviously with a, you know, a modern twist. Before we get too deep into this whole new flying flea thing, I think it's helpful to understand where Royal Enfield itself has come from. We got some great insights from uh, CEO B. Govan Rojan's speech that kind of lay it all out. Rajan's perspective is really something because he's the one who steered the company through some like massive changes. OK, so rewind back to the early 90s. Royal Enfield is basically just this one factory in Chennai pushing out, what, maybe a thousand motorcycles a month and the competition Oh, man, it was brutal, especially for those everyday kind of commuter bikes where fuel efficiency was king, you know? Yeah, that was a tough market to break out in. You either had to, like, race to the bottom on price or you had to find something truly unique to offer. And instead of getting sucked into that whole gas mileage war, they decided to, like, play a different game entirely. They leaned hard into building motorcycles that were all about passion, about that pure joy of riding. It was a gamble, for sure. But... Man, it was brilliant, too. They recognized that for a certain kind of rider, it's the experience, the feeling of the bike that's more important than just, you know, ticking boxes on a spec sheet. And wow, did it ever pay off. Fast forward to today, right? Royal Enfield's pumping out 3,200 motorcycles every single day across their whole lineup. They're a global force now. And in the middleweight category, they're the ones to beat. It's proof their vision was right on the money. They understood their niche. And they built on that authenticity instead of chasing every trend that came along. And so now they're taking all that experience, all that know-how, and they're launching Flying Flea as a separate brand under the Royal Enfield umbrella. And they're going after those riders who want something more urban, more styled. They're calling them City Plus riders. That's an interesting distinction, City Plus. It suggests someone who's not just using their bike to get from A to B. It's yeah. like part of their whole lifestyle, you know, an extension of themselves in this connected urban environment. Right, exactly. And the first model they've shown off, the C6. This is where things get really interesting. It's this amazing mix of retro looks with some seriously cutting edge tech. That combo, it's really hot right now. You see it in design and technology everywhere. This idea that the future kind of has to have a little bit of the past mixed in. Think about it. You've got this classic girder fork suspension, which I got to say, it's more than just a visual thing. You know, it actually makes the bike handle differently. Yeah, that girder fork, it gives you a much more direct connection to the front wheel, a kind of roar, more mechanical feel. Some riders, they absolutely crave that. It's less about smoothness and more about that like visceral feedback. And then you've got the battery pack. They've styled it so beautifully, it almost looks like it's part of the motorcycle's frame. They've kept that retro vibe going with the single seat, the round headlamp, and even a TFT dashboard. That somehow doesn't look out of place at all. It's like they carefully chose every single detail, blend in the familiar with the futuristic. It's a design language that really speaks to this whole heritage meets innovation idea. But don't let the looks fool you. This thing is absolutely packed with tech. 28 patents filed for this bike alone, which tells you they're serious about pushing the limits. That's huge in the motorcycle world. Patents usually mean they've come up with some truly new engineering solutions, not just like minor tweaks on existing stuff. One of the things that just blew my mind is their whole bike that grows with the rider concept. So the C6 is software. It actually adapts to how you ride, and it'll even suggest adjustments to get you better mileage or a totally different riding feel even. This is where things get really, really interesting. We've seen adaptive tech in cars, sure, but on a motorcycle, 
The connection between writer and machine is just so much more direct, so much more intense. Imagine the software, you know, subtly changing how the throttle responds or even tweaking the suspension based on your riding style. And get this, they've designed a custom chip. That makes it possible to have over 200,000 writing mode combinations. It's insane. Wow, that level of customization, that's unheard of. Even in like those super high-end performance bikes, this isn't just about choosing you know, sport or eco mode. It's about fine-tuning the entire motorcycle to perfectly match your preferences, your skill level, even the road conditions. And they haven't forgotten about safety, of course. You've got cornering ABS, traction control, all that standard. But let's talk about the actual riding experience, because from the test rides they did in Barcelona, it sounds like this C6, it's more than just a tech showcase. It's seriously fun to ride. Yeah, that's the make or break point, isn't it? All the tech in the world doesn't mean a thing if the bike itself just isn't engaging to ride. What's interesting here is that Royal Enfield, they've always really emphasized that feeling, you yeah. know, that connection with the road. And it seems like they haven't lost sight of that with the C6. From the reviews I've seen, people are saying it's super nimble in traffic, which makes sense, right, for that mm. urban rider. <laughs> but then you take it out on some winding roads, and that's where it really comes alive. That duality is important, yeah. It needs to be practical for everyday use, for sure. But it also has to deliver that thrill, that kind of raw excitement that makes people passionate about motorcycles. Okay, so we've got this bold move with Flying Flea, and it kind of makes you wonder, why go the sub-brand route at all? Why not just release these electric bikes as, you know, Royal Enfields? Well, it's a smart strategy for a few reasons, actually. First off, it lets them target this new City Plus rider yeah. without messing with their core customer base. You know, there are plenty of folks out there who love that traditional Royal Enfield experience, and that's not going anywhere. So Flying Fleet kind of lets them experiment a bit, right? Be a little edgier mm -hmm. without risking the reputation of the main brand. Exactly. Gives them more freedom. Second, it allows them to really lean into the tech and design language. Yeah. That appeals to this newer audience. I mean, imagine if they tried to make the C6 look like a classic bullet. It just wouldn't have the same impact. You yeah, know? it would feel forced, right? Like they were trying to be something they're not. Exactly. And third, this whole sub-brand strategy, it creates a buzz a sense of excitement that a new model release alone, it just might not achieve. It's like they're saying, hey, we're serious about this. This is something different. It's like a startup within a company that's over a century old, <laughs> which honestly is pretty cool. But here's the thing that really gets me. We've seen other motorcycle manufacturers, right? Kind of dicking their toes into the electric world. But this feels different. This isn't just about swapping out an engine. It's about creating a whole new experience. I see what you mean. There's a thoughtfulness to it, definitely. Like a recognition that the electric motorcycle, it's not just about being green. It's about rethinking how people interact with their bikes. And that makes me wonder, is this the start of a major shift in the whole motorcycle industry? It's hard to say for sure, but yeah. Royal Enfield is definitely making a statement here. If the Flying Flea really takes off, I think you'll see other manufacturers following suit for sure, either with sub-brands of their own or by, you know, integrating electric models more aggressively into their existing lines. And what about the riders themselves? Do you think this combo of retro looks and all this advanced tech, will it be the thing that brings a whole new generation into motorcycling, especially yeah. in cities? It has the potential, definitely. Mm. You're tapping into nostalgia, style, the desire for something unique. Yeah. But you're also offering practicality, ease of use, mm. and that connection to technology that a lot of younger riders they kind of expect that now. Yeah, it's hitting all the right notes. But we can't talk about the future of motorcycling without talking about sustainability. I mean, that's a huge part of this whole thing, right? Absolutely. Electrification is crucial for the industry. If they want to reduce their environmental impact, that is. But it's not just about emissions either. It's about noise pollution too. And in cities, man, that's a big deal. Electric motorcycles are so much quieter. It changes the whole dynamic of riding in an urban environment. It does. Think about it. You can still enjoy that thrill of riding without adding to the noise. It's already, you know, plaguing so many cities. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. So you've got this perfect storm brewing, right? The demand for sustainable transportation, the advancements in electric motorcycle tech, and this whole generation of riders coming up with totally different priorities. Royal Enfield with Flying Flea. They seem to be right at the heart of it all. They're definitely well positioned, that's for sure. They've got the heritage, the manufacturing expertise. Yeah. And now with Flying Flea, they're showing a real commitment to innovation in the electric space. So let's just recap what we know so far. Royal Enfield, 123 years in the motorcycle game, launches Flying Flea, this dedicated electric motorcycle brand. 
aimed at those City Plus riders. They're first offering the C6. It's a masterpiece of design, really. Blending those retro cues with some genuinely cutting-edge technology. And we can't forget that custom chip, giving you over 200,000 ways to personalize how the bike rides. That's just insane. And they're not stopping there either. We've got the S6 Scrambler coming soon, built on the same platform as the C6, but geared towards a slightly different riding style. I think what we're seeing here is a real turning point in the motorcycle world. Yeah, the rise of electric motorcycles, it's inevitable at this point. What's fascinating is how companies like Royal Enfield how they're shaping that evolution. They're not just reacting to it. You know, they're leading the charge. So what really jumps out at you with this whole Flying Flea launch? You know, for me, it's how Royal Enfield is kind of walking that line. Yeah. Between their history, right, all that heritage, and like genuine innovation. They could have just played it safe, easy, released a basic electric bike with their, you know, regular badge on it. But they didn't. They're really pushing the yeah. boundaries here. Yeah. And that takes guts. Yeah, it feels like they're not just following trends. Like, they're actually trying to shape what Raiden is going to be in the future, especially when you think about that whole sustainability side of it. It's definitely more than just swapping out gas for batteries, yeah. yeah. Royal Enfield, they seem to get it. They get the, the electric motorcycle. It's a chance to kind of redefine urban mobility. Mm -hmm. And if they can hit that sweet spot, right, style, performance, and being eco-conscious, that's a winning combo. Big question is, will it click with riders? Will this be the bike that finally gets those diehard gas enthusiasts to switch over? Or is it going to be bringing in a whole new crowd altogether? Honestly, I think it could do both. I mean, the C6 is designed. It's a conversation starter. It's familiar, but it's also futuristic. And that that sparks curiosity. Right. You know, then you add in that crazy level of customization, the tech that actually adapts to how you ride. Yeah. That's not just a gimmick. It's about taking that bond between rider and machine and making it even stronger. And it was smart of him to follow up the C6 with the S6 Scrambler, right? Shows they're serious about building out this whole flying flea brand, given options for different types of riders. That's a key point for sure. By expanding that electric lineup, it's like they're making a statement. This isn't just some one-off experiment. It's a commitment to a whole new direction. So where does all this leave us? What's the takeaway for someone who's maybe not, a, you know, a hardcore motorcycle person, but they're interested in this idea of innovation and what it means for the future for all of us? Mm. I think the big takeaway here yeah. is that tradition and progress, they don't have to be enemies. Royal Enfield's proving that. Even a company with this long storied history, they can still be a leader in a world that's changing so fast. They're not clinging to the past, you know, they're using it as a foundation to build something totally new, something really exciting. And that's pretty inspiring. Honestly, it tells me that any industry, no matter how like set in its ways it might seem, it can embrace change. It can find ways to evolve. Exactly. Royal Enfield taking this gamble with Flying Flea, it might be a sign of things to come, not just in the motorcycle world, but everywhere. Yeah. Makes you wonder, right? What other industries, those ones that seem kind of, you know, traditional, what other industries are ready for this kind of reinvention? What unexpected innovations are just waiting to be discovered? Those are the questions we're thinking about as we watch this whole story unfold. And on that note, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll catch you next time.